Hi everyone and welcome back! As you probably know by now if you're a subscriber to this channel, I'm a mobile engineer specialized in Flutter. I actually have a job as a senior Flutter engineer and this is the list of technologies I'm trying to learn in 2023. Before I start with the tech, I want to give you some context on my career progression so far, so you know where I stand before the year starts. If you want to skip through this, I have chapters, so I'm not holding you back. In 2016, I started learning the Android SDK with Java. After making some cute apps, I put it aside. In 2018, I started uh, learning Flutter. It was in beta by then, but uh, it was fun. I did it for fun. After that, I got a job as a middle developer in .NET. In June, I think? I skipped the junior role for some reason. I... It wasn't my choice, I just got hired that way. After staying there for a couple of months, I started freelancing with Flutter. The reason? Well, legacy code. In 2019 I got a job as a part-time Android dev, because it was Android Auto, it was cool. A bit more freelancing in the meantime. And after that the pandemic hit and I got a job as a Go developer for a Swedish startup, which was really cool. I really enjoyed my time there but I wanted to go back to mobile, so I took on the tech lead role in a small startup agency, where I led two projects of which one is in production right now. And now I have the role of a senior Flutter engineer or mobile engineer, or I don't care. It's a cool job. Now with all that out of the way, let's start with... Since I'm a sucker for Dart, I started looking at Dart Frog which is a framework that is developed by very good ventures. I'm already familiar with some uh, backend frameworks. Spring, which I like to use with Kotlin. Flask, which I use with Python, obviously. And Nest.js, because you cannot really call yourself a developer in 2022 without knowing how to use JavaScript or using it for something, right? I'm not planning to use Dart Frog in production anytime soon, but that's not a reason to look at it. That's one of the projects I am planning to contribute as an open source project in 2023. Of course, if my job and uh, YouTube channel allows me to. I mean, more likely time, if time allows me to. I actually love Go as a programming language. I like its simplicity and how easily you can get onboarded on any project, because any Go code looks the same, which is an amazing thing. And that means it's opinionated. But I can't seem to be using it for anything, really. And I'm not using it for microservices or systems programming language, anyway. All this boils down to using the right tool for the job, which most of the time Go is not. For me, anyway. Whenever I'm doing serverless, which is like most of the time I need a backend, I'm using JavaScript because I'm using it for Google Cloud Functions and Firebase. I know it's vendor lock, but it's easy. And JavaScript is implemented so nicely, I mean TypeScript, that I don't think I'm going to sacrifice a lot of code just to use Go. That would be just adding chaos. So for 2023, I would like to be adding Rust to my tool belt. I actually have some friends that are using Rust, so they could make my experience better. Rust is all the time praised for having an amazing developer experience. And I would like to be treated nicely. I'm already in too deep with Firebase for all my personal and freelancing projects, because it's great. <sighs> I never needed anything more than Firebase is offering for backend, and since the integration of Cloud Functions and TypeScript in general, I don't know what to say, life has been amazing. So I'd like to challenge this belief of mine and try both Superbase and AppWrite. I saw that both the teams behind these Firebase alternatives are doing an amazing thing, and I'm interested to take a deeper look into their usability. I'm not trying to migrate any of my older projects, but who knows what I'm gonna be using for the next ones. I've, I'm not convinced yet, because I haven't given any of those a try, like, properly, but I'm subscribed to the newsletters to stay up to date. Because I think if you don't stay up to date, you cannot really call yourself a developer for long. 
Say I've got another chance to specialize in another mobile technology, or even React. Would I choose differently, knowing all I know now? In short, no. Because Flutter is a technology that fits me very well. Because it's unopinionated, and I am opinionated in writing code, but if any of you can recommend me some technology for mobile development that is not Xamarin or React Native, I'm waiting for those in the comments. And whichever gets the most likes will probably get a dedicated video. Also, not to technology, but I am really planning to get more into software architecture. This is the thing I enjoyed most during my time as a tech lead, and it's the thing I really feel I didn't dig deep enough, or as deep as I would have liked to. I just don't know any good resources on this yet, but I'm gonna find out or you're gonna tell me. I'm open. And what I mean by software architecture is mostly domain-driven decisions. Okay, I would mostly like not to optimize for 1 million users right away. I would like to take into consideration the requirements of the app. I think this is about it for my plans regarding my software career in 2023. If you want to share your thoughts or tell me where your software career is headed, the comment section is always open for you. You can also find me on Twitter. Thanks for watching. Bye.